Hey everyone, Firebase supports certain identity providers like Google and Twitter right out of the box, but it doesn't support ones like Twitch out of the box. I wanted to talk about what my goals were with the site that I was making and the problems I went through and how I fixed them. My goal as much as possible was to treat Twitch just like those official identity providers, Google and Twitter. That meant a couple of things. One was a login or a register button with Twitch. And the second was to be able to link this to your account and then disconnect it later. I did get it working. It took me a very long time. I'm going to take this video to go through those problems and solutions. Like I mentioned, you do get access to some of this code that I'm talking about as part of the course. And then also there's a note that I have here with just a ton of information. I mean, if you look at how many different reference links there are, everything that you see in blue as I scroll down here, I researched a lot in order to get this working. Just like with the Twitter example in my other video, this starts with making a Twitch app. You go to dev.twitch.tv, you go through their process there, and you specify an OAuth redirect URL, which I'll cover in just a little bit. From this, you will get a client ID and a secret. So we can see that that is what we'll plug into this code here. And then at the bottom, I had to customize the paths. I don't think Twitch uses the canonical paths with just OAuth. They put OAuth 2 at the end. So we customized that and we are good to go. Let's go over the OAuth flow, the OpenID Connect flow for those of you who don't know. The first thing, and this is pretty clear, the user is going to click a button on your website that's something like login or register with Twitch. Then that's going to call into a cloud function that will generate a URL for Twitch. So you'll redirect the user to that URL and now that they're on Twitch, they'll type in their credentials. Twitch will then, after they're done with that, send them back to our site with a code. And this redirect that happens is why you had to type in the right redirect URL when you were making the app. We send that code to a different Google function on the back end, and then that back end will ask Twitch for a token, which we can return to you in the form of a Firebase token eventually. Let's talk about just the second and third steps here about generating a redirect URL and then redirecting the user to that URL. Here's what the code for that looks like, and I'm gonna zoom in on a few different parts here. Let's start with the very beginning, which is just the function definition. We need to make a URL, we need to return it to that user. They might be registering for an account, which means we don't know anything about them yet. We don't have an ID to associate with them. And we need to have an ID to associate with them or some way of associating data because we need to store state. So what is state? State is just a random number of bytes that we have to protect against cross-site request forgery attacks. If you don't know what these are, you're in luck because I'm about to go into detail about them. The Internet Engineering Task Force says this about the state parameter. Clients must prevent cross-site request forgery. One-time use CSRF tokens carried in the state parameter should be used for that purpose. And Twitch on their own documentation says the same thing. We strongly recommend you use this. What is a cross-site request forgery attack? How does it work? Well, let's consider that you have a URL in your application that is something like slash logout as the URL. And if you call into this, it logs you out. If I, as a malicious user, want to log you out, I could form an image tag like this on my own site. It's not even on adamlearns.com, but it doesn't matter because this is still going to reach out to that site that is in the source tag. And because hitting that URL logs you out, now you won't be logged into adamlearns.com anymore. On its own, that's really not an attack, it's inconvenient, but this is the principle behind the attack that you get to. Imagine that you have a login URL, not a logout URL. And here we take in that authorization code that we get from the flow that I discussed earlier. Now the exploit would be that I call into the login URL with my own code. So I, the malicious user, am going to call into it for you. And at that point, you might be on my account. This could mean a number of different things depending on how exactly your site exposes these URLs and what being on an attacker's account means. At the very least, it could be that you start typing in your own data and the attacker can see it. But at worst, it might be something like, well, now the attacker can log in as you, or maybe they got linked to your account and they have access to what you purchased or any other personal information. This could be a problem, but how does state protect against it? Well. It only helps if the attacker can't also provide the state. Here in this, we had login and then a query parameter of code. If you put state directly into here and it was something that was deterministic or was the same every time, then the attacker could provide that too and it's not protecting you at all. 
So we need the attacker to not be able to provide it, which means that we're going to generate a state per user. We need to associate it to them somehow, and we'll use a cookie to do that. And when they finally get back to us with that state, we'll validate the one that they supplied against the one that's in their cookie. This is where defining the function as an HTTP function made things a little bit easier for us because we can just call res.cookie to set the state to whatever was in that generated 20 bytes that we had. But there's a problem here. Your cloud functions are going to be running from a URL that looks like this, your project ID.firebaseapp.com. And unless you want to share this domain with your users, then you're probably going to be running from a custom domain. And some browsers are going to block cookies between these two because they're considered to be third party cookies. You'll run into errors that look something like this. This is just a custom error that I had on my site. The solution to this was pretty straightforward, actually. You can use Firebase Hosting's rewrite features to redirect a URL on your site to a function in the back end. At that point, they'll be seen as the same domain, so the cookies will persist across that redirect to getting a token. That on its own was a major problem already. But even once I got done with that, I wasn't really in the clear. I wanted to figure out what we do about UIDs. With Firebase, if you were to connect with Google or with Twitter, you'll get a UID that looks something like this. Twitch has their own forms of IDs and they're numerical. So what do we do when it comes to another site? Are they gonna use numbers? Are they going to use something like this? Could there be a potential collision? So I would just avoid collisions by prefixing it with something like Twitch colon. And that way there was no potential for this site colliding with, let's say if I used Instagram or Discord and the colon prevents it from colliding with anything the Firebase does. However, that's not really the full problem. Let's say you have this flow and this is a contrived flow, but it shows off a problem anyway. A user signs up with Twitch. So now we give them their UID, Twitch colon, and then a the number, and then they link Google to their account. Then they disconnect Twitch so that now they have just a Google account. However, their UID is still going to be this. So now when they go to sign up with an account again with Twitch, they'll run into a collision here and they won't be able to create their new account. Now, again, that's a contrived scenario. I don't see users doing this, but you still have this issue where you've disconnected Twitch, but you still have their user ID. I see that as a problem. I don't know for sure if this is against GDPR, but to me, I wanted to fix this. Fixing this was more of a design problem than a coding problem. So the code's pretty straightforward, but coming up with a design for this did take me some time. It's simple in the end. We let Firebase generate UIDs for us, even on Twitch. Then we store your Twitch UID into a property in Firestore. And I just call this unofficial provider IDs and it's an array. And then when we want to look up your user, we need to look it up in the right spot. So if it's a Google account, if it's a Twitter account, we're looking it up as your main UID. But if it's a Twitch account, we're looking it up in this array. So how that works is I just check to see, does your UID start with Twitch? If so, look it up in Firebase. If it doesn't start with Twitch, then just call admin.getUser. And that was it. This was just a quick run through some of the problems that I came across. And as I mentioned, this took a very long time. If you're going to connect your own identity provider that is not officially supported by Firebase, I highly suggest you look through the notes and the code that I was talking about. Again, I hope you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching.